I'll take the exam review tomorrow before you take your exam. Yep. Okay. So what do we want to go over? You can give me a page number and a question number. Macy? Um, page 14. Okay. And either 1A or 1B. 14. Okay. I think that's what she asked about. She said one, then A, B, and C. Oh, gotcha. Oh, so Macy, you wanted these ones down at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, so well, I'll start with this one, and then we'll go to that one. Okay, so this is one similar to that one that was on your most recent test. Um, what is the value of A sub 0? Where does that come from? That's your y-intercept. That's your y-intercept. So looking at this, this is, would be your A sub 0 of negative 4. Okay. And then it says to write the equation in factored form. And this is explaining a little bit about that double root thing. You don't have to worry about the double root thing for your exam, okay? Um, but you can use this information within this problem. So how do we get the factors? What information from the graph helps me write factors? Okay, so right here I have a root at negative 2. So that means I have a factor of what? How would I write a factor? X plus 2, right? Because it's really X minus negative 2. And then what this thing is talking about, see how this is one of those ones where it just comes up and touches the axis and then goes back down? So technically I have two roots there. Like if you think about when you did the quadratic formula, remember how when you got a 0 under the, the square root, a 0 for the discriminant, you ended up doing like 5 plus 0 and 5 minus 0. And since both of those come out to be 5, we just said the answer was 5. But technically, you got 5 two different ways, okay? And so that 5 counted as a double root. And so that's what's happening here. That means you have two copies of this. And again, that piece of it is not on your exam, but that's just what that means, is that you have two of these factors, because that negative 2 counts twice. Where else do I have a root? One. Positive 1. And so what, how do I make a factor out of that? That would be x minus 1. So to write this in factored form, and this would be for part B, it would be x plus 2, and you technically have two copies of that, times x minus 1. Okay? So that's your factored form. If you had another root at 4, then you would tack on an x minus 4. It's everywhere you have an x-intercept you make into a factor. And then how do you get that into standard form? Uh, expand it right so I would write this out twice and I would foil it and then I would take that result and multiply by the x minus 1 and so on Wait, why is x plus 2 squared? because this is telling me that I have a double root here okay. um, because it's it's tangent to the axis meaning it just touches it it doesn't actually cross it it just touches it and then goes the other direction um, and so that counts as like having two copies of that root okay and we didn't do a lot with the double roots this year, so don't worry about that piece of it for the exam. But you should be able to turn these things into factors. Okay? Oh, this is written. Yeah. Can you do like the refoil three things? Sure. You want me to do one of those? Yeah. Okay. So like this one here, you're right, this would be a three one. Um, really what this means is that I have x plus 2 written out twice, right? And so I would start by foiling these two, and I'm just going to kind of ignore those. Well, I can probably squeeze it in here. So x times x is x squared. And then I'm going to get a 2x and a 2x. So I'm going to combine that to make 4x. Are you okay with me kind of taking that leap? Yeah. Okay. And then 2 times 2 would just be a 4. So that's what I would get by multiplying the first 2 together. And then I want to take that whole thing and multiply by x minus 1. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of repeat the process. I'm going to take x squared and multiply by x. So I get x to the third x squared times negative 1, so that would be minus 1x squared. 4x times x would be plus 4x squared. 4x times negative 1 would give me negative 4x. And then I would do the 4, so 4 times x is 4x. And 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. And a way for you to check and make sure you caught them all, if this one has three things and this one has two things, how many pieces should you end up with? Six, right? Because you're going to have three different things that are each being multiplied by two things. Okay? So I should have six terms, and then, of course, I could go through and combine. Do you need to see me combine all these? No. It's not that hard. Your x's are going to cancel there anyway. So it would be x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4. And that would be your answer for letter C. Does that make sense, James? Are you yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, looking at, like, 1A and 1B, 
Um, let's do, I'm going to do 1B because 1B has one extra step. What's the first thing you want to do with 1B? Yeah, let's get rid of that 3. So minus 3, minus 3. So I get the absolute value of x plus 4 equals 9. Now, what numbers could have an absolute value of 9? 9 and negative 9 would both have an absolute value of 9, right? So it's whatever things are 9 spaces away from 0. So this thing here could equal positive 9. If this was positive 9, what would x be? 5. But it could also equal negative 9, and the absolute value would still be 9. So when you get to this point, you have to do like two separate problems. You have to do x plus 4 could equal 9, or x plus 4 could equal negative 9. And you're not necessarily going to get like plus or minus the same number as an answer. Okay? Here, if I subtract 4 from each side, I get x equals 5. Here, if I subtract 4 from each side, I get x equals negative 13. So your answer would be this or this. Either one of those would work out correctly. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. With that? Okay. What else do we want to see? From anywhere? Yep, Matt? Uh, 15, page 15, number 6. 15, number 6. Okay. Um, oh, this one you probably are confused on because it's easy, okay? Where can I get this value? Calculator. Calculator, yeah. Plug it in. Yep, Fancy especially calculator. when it says evaluate to the nearest thousand. That just wants like a, a decimal. And because this is a, now if this was not a common log, okay, then your calculator wouldn't be able to do it for you. At least not all calculators would, okay? But this, because it's a common log, you can just hit log of that. What's that? Calculator is um, well, older graphing calculators, so these newer calculators, if you go under the math menu, there is a place where you can do log and then you can put in a different base. So like you could type in log base 2 of 8, something like that. I think it's under the math menu. I've honestly never yeah. really used it. Yeah. Um, but the older calculators, like the older graphing ones, don't have that. And so you can only do base 10 with the calculators. Okay. okay. Jesse? Uh, 35 page Okay, do we, are you okay on this, just typing it in? Sure. Um, let me get to, um, let me do Jesse's question just before I forget, and then remind me to come back to that. Page 20, and I'm sorry, Jesse, which number? 35. Okay. Oh, factoring. Okay, here's what I would do with 35. Probably most of you would go straight to the quadratic formula here which is not a bad idea, except you're going to lose a piece of this. What would you do to this before, like, what could you do to this on your own before you touch quadratic formula? Yeah. What could you take out of all three of these? Two. Okay. So if I take out a two, then I have p squared minus 6p minus 91. Okay. If you were doing this, like, truly by hand, you would ask yourself, what multiplies to 91 and subtracts to 6? I want to say it's 7 and 13. Negative 13 and 7. Negative 13 and 7, okay. Um, but what you could do at that point, if you, if you aren't comfortable with that, and that's not a terrible one because that one doesn't have the number out here, okay? But if you didn't know that off the top of your head, what could you do with this chunk? Quadratic. Quadratic formula in your calculator. And if you do the quadratic formula, it should give you negative 7 and positive 13. And then remember, just like that one we did on the graph, you should be able to say, like, okay, these are the roots, so now I can turn them into factors. One of them would be p minus negative 7, and one of them would be p minus 13. Just don't forget about this 2 that you pulled out ahead of time, okay? Because had you done this with the original one, you would have gotten these same factors. Like, if you had plugged this into the quadratic formula, it would have the same roots. But... Um, if you only wrote these two things, you would lose that too. Okay? Tanner? You always take the opposite out of the quadratic formula. Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the factor, so the quadratic formula gives you r, and the root, I'm sorry, the factor is always x minus r. So because of that minus sign, it's always going to look the opposite. Okay? Cam? Uh, page 21, me and Matt, imaginary number. So okay, page 21, the imaginary numbers. Perfect. Wait, so the answer for 35 is... Oh, it would be this right here. Okay. Okay. 
Heidi, did you have a question about that one or a different question? Okay. All right. If it's on that same page, let's do that first. And then Cam will go to those other ones. Okay, 37. So 37, I'm not seeing a GCF, right? It's not really, I mean, technically it is a quadratic, but it's not a quadratic we could do quadratic formula with. So what do we do? It's a difference of squares, right? This is a perfect square. Okay, ask yourself, what do I square to get x squared? One. X, right? One x. What do I square to get 9y squared? 3y. And so then how do you make those into factors? Put a minus and addition. Yep, so you're going to have x plus 3y and x minus 9y, or minus 3y. Okay, and again, you can always check that by foiling back together and it should give you this back. So anytime you don't have that middle term, anytime that middle term is missing, that means your two factors look exactly the same except one's a plus and one's a minus. That's how you get them to cancel out. Okay, let's look at the imaginary number stuff. So, Cam, are we looking like 31, 32, 33, like those kinds of ones? Okay, all of them. All right, let me give you something that might save your life. And honestly, I probably mentioned this to you, but because you had a no calculator part to that quiz that we took on this stuff, um, I didn't emphasize this a lot. I wanted you to be able to do it by hand. Now your calculator is totally fair game. Your calculator has an I button on it. Okay. Oh, above the decimal point key. Okay. I think it's above the decimal point key. Am I right? Okay. So something like this, really all you're doing here is combining like terms. As you're doing 8 plus 3 is 11, and then negative 4i plus 8i would give positive 4i. Okay, and this would be your answer. I don't know why I didn't just write it over here, but that would be your answer. Um, but put that in your calculator, just how it's written, and it'll do that for you. Okay, it'll give you that answer. Is there anywhere we like can't do that for? Well, not with any of these ones that like have I in the problem. You can type it in with an I. Okay. Um, now something like this, if you were to do especially this piece by hand. If you did this piece by hand, you would get 9i squared in there. Yeah. Um, just remember that an i squared is really a what? Negative, negative a negative 1. So if you were to end up with 9i squared in your problem somewhere, you can cross that out and just turn it into a negative 9. Okay? And that's what this a plus bi form nonsense is, is. You don't have to do anything special with that. It's just that your answer should come out looking like one of those. Is that everything is going to be either a regular number... And that's what the A represents, is all of your regular numbers added together. Or it's going to be something with an I, and then you combine all your I's together. So your final answer should be a regular number and an I number. Matt? Would this exam be all multiple choice? It is about 35 questions that are multiple choice, and then I think 8 of them that are short response. Okay. okay. It's, it's not too bad. The one thing I do want to let you know is... Don't write off the free response ones because I have a lot of people who say, oh, that's only eight questions. These other ones are 35. You know, I'm going to put way more effort into these. Um, the short response ones, because they're like multi-step and you show your work and there's lots of partial credit, those eight questions are worth almost as much as the multiple choice portion. Okay, like point-wise, I think it's like a 55-45 like a split percentage-wise of your exam points-wise. So... Those short response questions, even if you don't know how to get all the way to the answer, do whatever you can and get yourself some, some partial credit. How do you do, like, 34 divided by 20? Okay, so yeah, let's talk about those. Now, these ones will work in your calculator if you have your calculator set to A plus BI mode. So if you go to mode and go to A plus BI, your calculator will do them. If your calculator is not set for that, it's going to freak out when you do a square root of negative 36. No, it'll just give me error. Okay. Well, that's the calculator equivalent of freaking out. Megan? Do you have to switch track or can you just like keep it? You don't have to switch it. I'm trying to think if there's anywhere. The Okay, here's what I would worry about in terms of switching it back is if you had a problem that said give all real solutions to something, you would want to make sure that the only answers you were writing down were real numbers, like nothing with I. Now, you could switch it back for that if you wanted to. Or um, just know that if you get an answer from your calculator that has an I in it and the question's asking for real solutions, you would just say no solution, okay? So that's when, I would, that's when you would need to switch it back. Um, but this is actually really easy. What is the square root of negative 36? 6i. 6i, right? And the square root of negative 9? 
3i. Anytime you're taking the square root of a negative, it's just the square root with an i on it. And so this is really 6i over 3i. What's going to happen here? Okay, now it would become 2. i divided by i, though, does cancel out. And so 6 over 3 is just equal to 2. Okay? Now something like this. Um, square root of negative 169, 13i, times, square root of 25 would be, or negative 25 would be 5i. When you multiply these together, and you can do this in your calculator, it should be, let's see, 65i squared, but then what did we say about i squared? Okay, i squared is really a negative 1. So this now says 65 times negative 1, which is really negative 65, Okay. And again, your calculator could do that for you. From here, your calculator would do it no matter what. If you wanted to type it in in the square root, you need to be in A plus BI form. How about that last one, number 36? Is that one terrifying? Nope. Maybe a little. Okay. Square, it does look like quadratic formula. What's square root of negative 16? 4i. Four 4i. Four so now I have 8 plus or minus 4i over 4. What am I going to do with that 4? Divide by both. So when you have that whole thing divided by 4, that's really this. That's really both of these divided by 4. And that'd be, yep, 8 over 4 is 2. And then here your i's would just, or your 4's would cancel and you'd be left with just 1i. You don't have to write the 1, but 2 plus or minus i. Cam, does that make you feel a little better? Yeah. Okay. What other problem do we want to do? Um, Go ahead, Jesse. 30 on that same page. Same page, 30. Okay, so this one actually, your life should be much easier now than when we actually did this this semester. Because when we did this, not only did you have to do quadratic formula the long way, but you had to do it like by hand without a calculator. Now you've got quadratic formula program in your calculator. Um, what do I have to do to this before I can use quadratic formula? Okay, so I need to slide this over and make it 6x squared plus 8x plus 5. And now from there, finding all solutions, that's what the quadratic formula does. So you can now plug this into your quadratic formula program in your calculator. I don't remember if these come out real or imaginary, but I suspect they're imaginary. I don't have a calculator here. So 6, 8, and 5. Yep. So I get something crazy like this. Now, here's a trick for you, and this doesn't always work. Because I know that this has an I on it, right? That's why they would write it like this, is because this is something imaginary. If I do the math fraction, it's going to turn whatever here can be written as a fraction into a fraction. And so it's going to give me that that first part is negative 2 thirds. Um, it's still not going to give me this big decimal. And some of the newer calculators, you can actually scroll up and just scroll over and see the number. Here I can't really see what the end of that number is, but what do I know it's going to have on the end? An I. An I, because if it didn't, your calculator would have just added it together for you. So for my two solutions, and I don't care if you write this, I mean, because one, one part of it's a fraction and one part of it's not. So I don't care if you write it as a fraction or a decimal, but negative 0.6 repeating. And then I could just say plus or minus... 0.623i, something like that. I guess it would be 624 because it rounds. Okay? See where I'm getting that from? And you could write them as two separate ones, but it's going to be the same thing, just one with a plus, one with a minus. Tanner? Um, if we do 13, 14, or 15, uh, 16. 16. 13, 14, or 15 on 16. Got it. Everyone good with that? Okay. 13, 14. Okay. First of all, number 13, this was my mistake. This was dumb. Okay. Yeah. This is a bad question. Um, those, all those scribbles you see on 13, 14, and 15, those used to be natural logs. And we didn't do natural logs, but natural logs follow all the same rules as regular logs. So I just turned all those questions into regular logs. However, this one there's actually like numbers in, and when I turned it to a regular log, it now no longer actually works out to be a true statement. So sorry about that. What I really wanted you to see here is, what is your base if this is just a regular log? Ten. 10, right? So this is technically saying base of 10, so 10 to the power of this equals this. So if I was to write that, that says 10 to the power of 3.91 equals 50. 
that doesn't work, right? That's not actually true, but that's what, the, that's what I made this say, okay? Um, natural logs have a base of E, which is like 2 point something. So 2 point something to the power of 3.91 might actually equal 50, okay? But, sorry about that, okay? That, as long as you know the mechanics, like you know I, it would be this to the power of this equals that. It's always, your base is always your base of your exponent. And then what it's equal to is always your exponent. Logs are equal to exponents. Okay, let's look at um, number 14. Why are they called natural logs? Um, it it's, okay, so the it E, the, the number E, and we talked about yeah. that when we talked continuous growth, is the, where that number came from is like natural growth patterns, like literally in nature. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so they, they call it a natural log when it has a base of E when you're working with that E as an exponent. Or E as a base, I guess I should say. So, yeah, but that's, they get their own fancy name, but it's really the same thing as any other logarithm. Okay, so when you see this, okay, log of x to the 8th divided by y to the ninth. Let me write this down. So this is actually number 14, but I'm going to write it down here at the bottom. And I'm going to kind of ignore this for now. I'm just going to talk about how we would simplify this. So if I see log of x to the 8th over y to the 9th, and I want to separate that into multiple logs, each one of these is going to get its own log. So I'm going to say log of x to the 8th and log of y to the 9th. When I'm dividing back here, how do I connect my two logs? Subtraction. Subtraction, right? And then what do I do with the 8 and the 9? Where can they go? The front. the front, right? So this would become 8 times log of x, and this would become 9 times log of y. Is this what this says? No. Okay, they kept it as division. They just they did this and this, but they kept it as a division between the logs. When you're separating those pieces, division becomes subtraction, multiplication becomes addition. Hunter? If you put in like certain numbers for x and y, mm -hmm. you do that to Figure out oh, to see if it's true? Sure. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, if this was really a true and false question, and I'm not sure how that's worded on your exam. Oh, I just wrote true. It's not. It's false. You just failed the exam. I sure did. Um, yes, that one should be true. Really? It's false to me. Oh, dang it. I'll go back and look at my answer key. Will you change something? Yeah, I might have changed something. Let's see. I just want to make sure. Yep, so this would be 2 log of x. Minus 3 log of y. It should, it should be true. Yep, should be true. Sorry, if my answer key said something different, I'll fix it. Um, because, and yeah. Over two, I know. Oh, messing up all over the place. Hey, at least I said the answer right. I just wrote it wrong. So, Tessa? 17 number 16. Got it. So, this one at the top? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good question on this one. Hey, and this gets back to that. I think James asked me to do a log one where you can't just type it in your calculator. This is one of those, okay? So the first thing I would do is combine these things on the top and the bottom, kind of doing the opposite process of what we were just doing, okay? So when I have addition in between here, how do I, how do I connect these two things? Multiplication. Multiplication. So this is really, the top is really saying log base 4 of 8 times 8, which is 64. Does that make sense? Okay. How do I connect these two? Division. Division. So this is really saying log base 4 of 16. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Okay. Let's look at just one of these by itself. Log base 4 of 64. Remember, the question I'm asking you is, what exponent do I need to turn a 4 into a 64? Do you know that off the top of your head? Three. Okay. It's a whole number. So what you could maybe do, because there are mathematical ways to solve it, but they're complicated. I would maybe take that 4 and just start raising it to powers. Or start multiplying by 4 and see how many times it takes to make 64. But this piece should equal 3, right? Because 4 to the third power equals 64. 4 to what power makes 16? 2. So now this is really saying 3 over 2, which is letter C. Okay. All right, maybe time for one more. Sure. Tessa? That was our one question? That was our one question. 19, 27.
Okay. Good question. All right, I need m by itself. So how do I get rid of negative four thirds? Multiply by a three fourths, negative three fourths. Six. Just be careful. You're technically not multiplying. You're raising to a power of negative three fourths. Now you do multiply these. That's how they cancel. But what you're really doing is raising to that power of negative three fourths. Now you can do this in your calculator. Um, if I ask you for that answer, if that was like on the short response part and it didn't specify, you could give me a decimal or a fraction. I don't care. But just know that if it's on the multiple choice part, you might get a decimal answer and all your answer choices might be fractions. And so then you need to know how to flip back and forth. I believe you should get 1 over 125 if you did it as a fraction. I don't know what it would be as a decimal. That sounds about, yeah, something like that. Okay. So I would take that as a decimal or a fraction. Um, if I was asking you to give it to me on the multiple choice, they're going to be written one way or the other. Okay? Okay, we will take more questions tomorrow. So I would say before you come back in tomorrow, go through your packet and make a note of any that you want to make sure we hit. We have an hour and 20 minutes together before you take your exam tomorrow. Um, yay is right.